Hi everyone, welcome to another video. Today we're going to be talking about three ways to reduce your paints for airbrushing. This is especially interesting for beginners and we're starting right now. So first of all I want to talk about the advice that goes around saying that you need to reduce your paints until the consistency of milk. Now I do not agree with that because it all depends on what you want to do. The consistency of your paint should depend on the technique and the results you want to get. So by getting this out of the way you do not need to focus on thinning down your paint to the consistency of milk all the time because sometimes you want it to be thicker or even thinner. So here I'm quickly going to demonstrate how paint works without reducer. First I'm going to show you when you have too little air pressure. You see, I have, I have no control. The paint is barely coming out and the airbrush really has troubles with shooting that paint. So I got no control and as you can see it's very, very grainy as well. But we can use Createx paint straight from the bottle. You just gotta up your air pressure. So this is about 30 psi now. See the difference? It's the same paint, but now I got full control. Now suddenly my airbrush starts working with paint without reducer. So it's very important to use the right air pressure when you don't want to use reducer or when when you're using thicker paints. Especially for base coating, I like to use thicker paints because you can build up that paint way thicker and your base coating is going to be faster. Now a good question is why should we use reducer? Reducer actually really helps with the paint flow. It's gonna make your paint flow better but also it's gonna give you a little bit less tip dry and it's gonna give you more control and your colors will be smoother. The finish will be a lot smoother and the transition you will build up between colors will be a lot smoother when you use a little bit of reducer. So now I've simply added two drops of reducer and now my paint is way thinner. I still got my hair high air pressure and what happens now is I can spider web very easily. So if we thin down our paints I need to lower my air pressure too. And that is simply just to avoid spider webbing. So if I carefully now And as you can see now I got full control, I can do very nice and light shading which does not look grainy. If you look in comparison to do this, you can see with reducer my, my paint is a lot softer and this is very good when you're doing subtle details, when you're trying to do some shading, which is something you cannot do with your paint without reducer because that paint is too concentrated, you want it to be reduced a little bit so you can do subtle colors, subtle tones, give your lure nice features. It's in the details sometimes and with reducer you're gonna have more control, it's gonna be easier to paint, easier to spray, but don't forget to adjust your air pressure. And last but not least, when to use extra much reducer. And we're talking about 70% of reducer and only 30% of paint, which is a very big difference you know that's it's like spraying water that has a little color in it now when do I use this is when I want to do very subtle shading or when I want to have full control over my colors let's say I'm using a dark brown or even a transparent black then I like to over reduce it so I can do very subtle nuances and dark shading but it doesn't stick out too much and then it really looks very natural instead of using that full opaque black with just a little bit of reducer or no reducer which looks very unrealistic because it sticks out way too much it's not subtle so by using a lot more reducer you're gonna gain more control over the transparency in the buildup of your paint and that's gonna help you when you're painting more realistic or you want to give it a little bit of a subtle color here and there or some shading some shadows 
And that's really gonna up your game in lure painting if you're starting to experiment a little bit with more transparent paints and over reducing them, spraying just this light little bit of nuances here and there, create a little bit of a texture using stencils with them too. It's very fun and can create very realistic or nice things that are just a little bit different than what most people are doing. I like to use over reduced paints when I'm doing very subtle details, if I'm trying to give very slight nuances. Also what I like to do with over reduced paints is that you can really layer on colors very slightly and build it up from there. So you got a lot of control in building up colors. So as you can see, if I shoot this on the paper, it's going to be very transparent. As you can see, it's, it's compared to this, this is more of a pink than it is a kind of red. And we started out as a quite dark red, carmine red. But that's how you can build up your colors. And now as you can see, can, I can really build up my colors very slowly, very easily from a really dark red to almost a very light pink if I want to. And because of over reducing your paint, it's gonna get more transparent. So let's do a quick conclusion here. You can use paint without reducer, it's no problem, but you need to up your air pressure, that's very important. Play a little bit with your air pressure and then you will notice that when you up your air pressure you can use paints straight out of the bottle even if they are a little thicker there's no problem and this is very good for base coating because you can layer on your base coats a little bit thicker and it's gonna it's gonna be a lot quicker to do it that way when you're using a little bit of reducer that is great for general painting if you're using stencils or anything or you just want to put on really nice colors it's not too transparent depending on the paint because you get transparent opaque paints and semi-transparent paints semi-opaque sorry that's a different topic but depending on the paint it's gonna be a little bit more transparent um, it's gonna give you better control so if you're doing fine stencil work or even if you're doing general stencil work it's just gonna help a lot if you use a little bit of reducer in there it's gonna give you better control Last but not least, over reducing your paints, don't forget to down your air pressure and this is great for doing very subtle transitions, layering nice tones, very tiny details, fine lining also is really good with a little bit of over reduced paints and especially when you want to do those subtle details on there, I would recommend to use over reduced paint and play a little bit with that experiment a little and you're gonna notice that you can do really nice things with a little bit of over reduced paint but don't forget that you cannot base coat a lure with over reduced paint because you're gonna lose adhesion this paint does not adhere well to plastics but for base coating I always like to mix in a little bit of 4050 that's gonna promote adhesion and it's gonna make sure that my paint really sticks well to the bait and it's gonna make sure that my paint is gonna be more durable at the end as always, I will leave a link in the description below for all the materials that I used in this video. And this will guide you to my web shop, which is based in Sweden. And if you would buy anything there, you will be supporting me and the channel. If you got any questions about reducing your paints or any other questions, leave them in the comments down below. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day and see you next time. Bye bye.